Good evening and welcome to the uh, Millville Board of Selectmen meeting of uh, April 6, 2021. I'm Peter Crusoe, your town administrator, and we'll start off by just introducing the members of the Board of Selectmen. We have uh, returning, as you see, Jennifer Gill and Andrew Alward. We have new members uh, that we welcome, Adrian Pettit and Todd Trottier. Um, they're welcome to talk about themselves if they want, just to give a little introduction. And if not, we'll just move on to uh, reorganization of the board. Depends on what you feel like. I think folks all know you, they voted for you. And so off we go. So uh, I think on item three, we want to elect a chair, a vice chair and a secretary clerk of the Board of Selectmen. And typically the way you do that, somebody makes a motion to elect. We start out generally with a chair of the Board of Selectmen. Have it seconded and you guys vote. Okay. I'll make a motion that Jennifer Gill be the chairperson of the Board of Selectmen. I'll second that. Okay, so can I have a vote please by roll? Adrian Pettit? Aye. Todd Trottier? Aye. Andrew? Aye. And Mrs. Gill? Aye. Okay, we can't hear you all the time. So sometimes you're. Oh, really? Is okay. Way. Yep. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So, congrats. Um, next, you need to, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to the chair to do the rest of it. How's that? <laughs> okay, sounds good. So, now we're looking for uh, nominations for a vice chair. So the vice, just because I was been vice chair for the last year, so I can let you know that if the chair is absent, then you have to run the meeting. That's so far been my experience. Uh, I've had been called on to so many other duties, so it's a good gig. <laughs> um, I'll nominate uh, Andrew Alward for vice chair. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Adrian Pettit, aye. Todd Trottier, aye. Jennifer Gill, aye. Aye. All right, sounds good. So then the last role is secretary slash clerk. And you will take minutes if we're in executive session. So only for executive session, Jen? Yes. OK. And the clerk occasionally signs some forms, just very rarely, but occasionally. Well, I'll offer to do it. I'm not going to nominate myself. <laughs> I, I took notes for FinCom and I'm happy to do it if nobody else wants to or if you want me to. I'll make a motion that Adrian Pettit is the secretary slash clerk. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor. So we'll start with Andrew. Sorry, what? Roll call oh. vote. Oh, any Aye. discussion? I guess I keep forgetting discussion. All right, so Andrew, over to you. Aye. Todd? Aye. Aye for me. Adrian? Aye. All right. Okay, so um, over to announcements. Do we have any new announcements, Peter? No. Okay. Any correspondence? No. Any, um, is the Board of Health here to talk about COVID updates? No, they're always invited, uh, generally don't show. Um, and the only thing I would say on Board of uh, Health COVID update is look to the town's website for uh, potentially changing some hours. Right now, the hours of town hall are nine to 11, at the window for town clerk and building and 11 to 1 for collector and treasurer uh, as well as uh, town clerk uh, otherwise by appointment um, we'll probably be switching that nine to, th to one uh, mondays and thursdays for all those departments and then nine to three tuesdays and wednesdays but i'll know that uh, better once i 
Twisted Some Arms tomorrow, and we'll post that on the website, and we'll start probably doing that uh, April 20th. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, new business. We are joined by our amazing town moderator, Jackie Lima, to talk about the annual town meeting in May. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, so I had asked Peter um, to be put on the agenda um, as the annual town meeting is going to be here before we know it. Um, so just a reminder, it is the second Monday in May per our bylaws, which would be Monday, May 10th. Um, and this board is responsible for posting the warrant um, and for encouraging people to come and attend our meeting and uh, where we will vote on many things for the upcoming year, including the town's budget and any sort of articles that are submitted that need to be addressed for the upcoming year. Last year around this time, I had pulled together a task force. Um, there was 12 of us, I believe, that were on the task force. Um, because we had just kicked off the pandemic and we didn't quite know what we could do. Uh, there were representatives from the Board of Health, from Finance, from Board of Selectmen, from the Senior Center, uh, average residents. Um, and we put together a committee to really examine kind of what it should look like. Uh, we made a recommendation at the time to the Board of Selectmen to hold our meeting at the Millville Elementary Ball uh, Field outside. Um, in my opinion, the meeting went off last year very smoothly. Um, it was, you know, really uh, well attended. Uh, all the protocols that we put in place in terms of social distancing, making sure we had hand sanitizer on site, making sure uh, audio visual, visual worked, um, you know, just really distancing everybody. We had set up some tents. Uh, we were prepared for all kinds of different weather and it seemed to work out really well. Um, then fast forward to the fall, we had our special town meeting. Um, at that time, the school was in some sort of a hybrid session, so they had some tents on site already. Um, so in conjunction with this board, the Board of Health, Finance Committee, myself, we decided to do another outdoor uh, special town meeting, but it was positioned a little bit differently to accommodate um, kind of things that the school had already set up on the field. We didn't want to interrupt them too much. So we're now at a place again this year where we're looking at, you know, a May 10th deadline um, because there is an active pandemic within the state of Massachusetts that can be delayed. Uh, so we are not beholden to that date. If we felt for some reason it was unsafe, we could postpone that meeting. Um, but looking at the information in the world around us, um, I was looking for some input, input from this board particularly as to how you'd like to proceed um, I tried to get in touch with Board of Health, but they didn't have a meeting um, that I was able to attend uh, set up. So I don't really have a recommendation from them. I was hoping they'd be on tonight. They were on the agenda, but they didn't come. Um, so just kind of looking to see what, what your feeling was. Um, generally, we do a special at 630 and then we have the annual at kickoff at 7 p.m. If we are thinking of doing an outdoor meeting, we may want to move that earlier to try and get some daylight. Um, last year, we had done it actually on a Saturday so that we could uh, make sure to start. I think we had a noon or a one o'clock start time to use some daylight. Um, so at this point, I will turn it over to the board and, and see what your um, thoughts are on proceeding. Um, this is Adrian. I was going to say, um, I thought it went really well last year, too. And I think that people would be more comfortable if we're able to have it outside this year as well. Um, I think from a, what's going on in the world, I think there's a lot more progress than what we were experiencing both in June and October of last year. Um, I think it might be more like I think maybe we schedule it for an evening, the regular scheduled evening, and then have a rain date or something maybe on the weekend. Um, you know, we're also running up, I think, well, I'm trying to think of when Memorial Day is. We just don't want to obviously do it on that Saturday because I know a lot of people travel, but that's my input. And I guess from a cost perspective, um, are we able to use the CARES Act funds in order to offset the cost of having an outdoor meeting? So the past two meetings we were able to, um, the additional 
um, cable equipment that we had to purchase, the wireless mics, the tents, um, everything was able to be expended through the CARES Act. And Peter, I assume that is still the case. That is, yep. Um, so I just was looking at, um, at my phone to see when the, so the sunset today is 7, 17 p.m. So in a month, even if it's an hour later, that's only 8, 17 p.m. So, um, and I think if we have it earlier, it might be challenging for people with work and things like that to get here. So Adrian, I'm sorry, were you encouraging a Saturday or not encouraging a Saturday? Um, I mean, I think that's a good point. I would say the earliest we would wanna do it. And, and Jackie, you said we would open up with special town meeting first. I'm not really sure what the difference is um, between that and then kicking off annual town meeting afterwards. Um, probably like 5.30 or six would be the earliest we could start. Um, so maybe a Saturday with a Saturday rain date the following week or something like that. If right, so I, I, yeah, Peter, I haven't seen a warrant for a special town meeting, so I'm not sure that there would be one this year, but in the past, if there were uh, prior year bills or prior year um, issues that we had to resolve, uh, that would be done at a special, usually 30 minutes before. Um, if there is no warrant for a special this year, then, and we resolved everything in October, then there's no need to. I think last year in May, that's why we decided to do it on a, on a weekend. And even in October, we did them both on weekends so that we could start them earlier to not have to run into sunset. Right. So the sunset's 830 on May 10th. Um, there is no special. You've, I've sent you the warrant and what's in there is the meat of it, you know, uh, prior year bills were built into the last regular meeting. Um, we don't have any prior year bills that we know of, not that, that that's not to say there might not be some, but um, so there's, I see no need for a special, just uh, the regular meeting. It's a fairly condensed agenda other than the uh, basic, um, you know, budget uh, article. Um, there's some capital items, which the capital program committee is you know, gone through quite extensively. So, you know, I think if you could find a way to do a bit earlier, just for insurance purposes on, if you were gonna shoot for that evening of May 10th and stick to the bylaws, I think, you know, that's a reasonable approach, but that's that's all your call. I think the tenting, the outdoors, the, the model of the last two went very well and is easy to, you know, just replicate without much difficulty um, when, when and wherever. And rain date, I think the towns in the past put the, you know, basically the next day or the two days later as the approach versus a Saturday, but that's all your, you know, whatever you all think, so. Yeah, as the other, sorry, one more thing I can say is, so I've been moderator for two years. In 2019, our annual meeting, it was inside, it was three hours. In 2020, it was outdoors. Um, we had a couple of issues that had some debate on them. It was two hours. The fall that we just had outdoors was one hour. Um, so just kind of, you know, when you're thinking about dusk, um, I would say for an annual town meeting, we'll need between two to three hours, um, unless anything's super controversial. Yeah, and I'm just now thinking about bugs too, because they start to come out before it's dark and can be really uncomfortable. So we had bug spray on site for both of them. I think I, I would, if we're going to have it outside, and I do think that's the right thing to do, I would prefer to do a Saturday and then have the rain date be the following Saturday. Okay, or we could do Saturday and a rain date on Sunday too, just to make sure it's afternoon enough if people want to go to services or whatever on a Sunday morning so we had talked about that um, last year doing Saturday rain date Sunday but I think the board at the time um, and some of the input was if it rains on a Saturday odds are it might rain on Sunday or at least the fields might still be mushy so to do Saturday rain date following Saturday probably gave us a better odd than a back-to-back -back. okay I'm flexible <laughs> Andrew, Todd, any opinions? No, I agree. Saturday and Saturday sounds good to me.
Personally, I think we should try to follow the bylaws and put it on May 10th, um, just because it's not like the there's anything on the warrant that is too controversial. So I don't really foresee it taking that long. Like with the 2019 one, there are a couple things that were taking <clears throat> that took a while to, to uh, discuss. So I think it might be easier and better just to do it on the on May 10th. Maybe we follow the bylaws and it's not like we'll have that much of a, you know, besides the budget, which we'll have the usual discussion. I don't see anything on the, the uh, town warrant at this point that's going to take up too much time. So. Yeah, I guess my concern is that um, although we don't think it looks too controversial, I don't know that others agree. And so I get worried about, I don't feel comfortable predicting behavior um, of others. And if we look at past meetings, they've all been at least two hours. So. And I can probably speak for public safety. They were very concerned about um, trying to illuminate the field at night um, in terms of if people, when the meeting gets over, if it's dark, making sure to have adequate lighting that people don't trip on a field, if there are handicapped people, trying to escort people out um, from the field in the dark. I think from a public safety standpoint, everybody wanted to make sure that the meeting was wrapped up prior to dusk. We did have the spotlights um, on the field. Chief Landry made sure that they were there, but they don't illuminate that whole field. Um, and the way that we had to distance everybody and keep chairs you know, six feet apart, it, if you're walking across the field in the dark, I would say that that would be a, a situation that we would not wanna put our residents in. I mean, I think we could, depending on timing, we could do the Saturdays around the May 10th date. So what would that be like the 7th of May and then the 14th? I'm not exactly sure what how the dates run. Um, that way we're as close to the bylaw date as possible. Um, the 8th is the Saturday of Mother's Day. Oh. The day before Mother's Day. So maybe the 15th and the 22nd? I'm actually not available on the 15th. I have a I'm out of town. I have a prior commitment on the 15th. I can do the 8th. I can do the 22nd. I can do the 29th. I could do a Sunday afternoon. Um, the 15th is the only day this month that's out of the question for me. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people travel out of town on the 8th for Mother's Day. I know everyone, my close knit does a Sunday thing for Mother's Day. Yeah. Um, so we could do the first and the eighth or the eighth and the 22nd. I don't know if the first is too soon though, given the warrant posting and all of the recommendations that have to be voted That's on. That's what I was gonna ask. Has FinCom scheduled their public hearing because there are dates that they usually do their public hearing and then close the warrant and make recommendations on. So I wasn't sure if their timeline has been finalized. Do we need to finalize the date today? Because I know the FinCom has a joint meeting with Board of Selectmen tomorrow, so we can consult with them to see what their schedule looks like. Um, but the next meeting for Board of Selectmen is until the 20th, so I don't know if that's too late to finalize the date or if we can just have a quick meeting in between now and the 20th just to finalize the date. We have to post it 14 days before the uh, town meeting. That's sort of your drop dead day where it goes out. It has to be posted before, you know, 14 days uh, by the time of the start of the town meeting. So that if you did the first, that, that starts to push you back a bit. So I think, you know, the eighth is probably the soonest you can do it. Maybe your rain dates the 22nd or some such thing, you know? That's, yeah, I think that's all doable. Um, and I think, you know, I don't know that FinCom has set their public hearing date, but, you know, yes, we're meeting, we're, I'm meeting with them. You all are invited and, and booked if you do attend tomorrow night's uh, where they're going to go over. I don't know that they have anything further scheduled to meet with any departments after that. So then they're really into assessing what they're going to do and then their public hearing.
So, yeah, I mean, I'm in agreement that I think that if that works for people, um, you know, I just want to put out there, I'm actually out of town the 22nd, but I don't think that should dictate when the meeting is. Obviously, we need Jackie to moderate, it. <laughs> but hopefully we don't have rain on the 8th. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed for the 8th. And Jackie, for your, you still have folks available, I'm sure, from the group you had before, but you probably don't need all of them to get it done. You're going to have Tim, you know, as the key cable guy, as well as I'm sure Alex will be part of that team. Uh, Sherry's ready, willing, and able to do whatever's needed to start doing things. I think uh, having Lincoln volunteer again to be the tent guy makes a lot of sense. Um, if in fact, you know, everybody thinks the, tent, tent, the tents, the way they were kind of set up makes good sense uh, because it might also allow you to tolerate a little rain. You know, yeah. And push on through, should that be the case. Yep, I think um, pretty much what dictated it for me both times was however cable could get things set up. Yeah. Um, they come with the most equipment so whatever works for, you know, Tim and Alex in terms of, uh, you know, getting logistics, the speakers and the microphones set up, um, we can work the tents around yeah. that um, and the well lines. There are some water lines that bring into the school that we cannot uh, stake tents into. So as long as, uh, you know, Link is, is on site and will help with the tent uh, oversights. And um, also it was helpful to have highway um, Brian sent some of the guys up to help with some barrels and phones around. and things like yeah. that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we coordinated with Chief Landry to make sure the ambulance um, yeah. and there was personnel up there for that as well. So as long as, you know, he can get a guy up there or or a girl uh, on the 8th, um, I think that would be great. Would be all systems ago. And um, Peter, you would confirm with uh, the town accountant and the town's attorney that they would be able to make that meeting date as well. Yeah. We'll have representation from them. Yep. Do we need to make a motion? Yeah, that was my question. Do we make a motion now or do we check with everybody that's involved in the town meeting and vote Diane, on Diane, Diane should be consulted the town clerk as well to make sure that she'll be available. Okay, so I think from a recommendation perspective, we should go with that plan and find out if everybody else can make that work. Okay. So Peter, I think that's you because it's a board of selectmen call, right? You'll coordinate with all those people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we're about to talk about the, you know, in, in tonight's new business, we have the warrant discussion where we'll be changing the date to this date, uh, I don't think I've heard the time that you're all thinking about. You think a noon time, basically, and then all subject to, you know, Brian Riley, you know, Diane Lockwood. Um, we'll talk about town accounting a little bit later and uh, and getting things set up from everybody else. So everybody wants to get it done, so. Let's do it. I'm looking for the time of the one that we did um, previously. Was it one o'clock or was it at noon? I thought it was noon. I think it was noon too. Noon, okay. I think noon's a good time to do it, right? Yeah. You don't wanna do it 10 or 11. I think Tim needed some setup time. Yeah. yeah. And I had gone up and wiped off all the chairs because they all had dew on them yeah. from the night before. <laughs> and you stood on that, whatever that was. Yeah. Was that... Pretty dangerous. <laughs> the bleachers was last May. That was interesting. But then in the fall, we ended up getting a little podium from the marching band, which was super helpful, a little sturdier uh, and worked out pretty well. So I'll reach out to them and see if they can let us borrow that again. All right, so we're thinking the eighth at noon. Okay. Anything else with the annual town meeting? 
Okay. Thank you for joining us, Jackie. You're more than welcome to stay. Thank you. Um, moving on to the preliminary budget. So I just have the Excel open. I, I was going to print this. <laughs> it looks pretty crazy. Um, so what's the best way to kind of walk through this, Peter? I'm looking at the budget history summary. That's uh -huh. right. So there's a budget history summary that shows you each of the line items by department and mm -hmm. it's broken down. And uh, in the column 2022 BOS recommended is really mm -hmm my recommendations to you at okay. this stage of the game. Nothing has changed from what you've seen, I think probably twice now. Uh, this does show currently a deficit of just under $25,000. It is what fi FinCom will be talking to various departments tomorrow night. She, they're talking to library, public safety, and treasurer. Okay. They've already I think they're, I, I can't, I don't think they've dealt with highway. I think they're still trying to get confirmation of highway. Uh, okay. But they have talked to some other departments already. I may make some changes depending on what happens uh, that I talk about in the 48 hour session uh, later, but it's okay. geography. It's not going to change the bottom line. Okay. Um, so I can just go through kind of the big line items. So seven is board of selection. We get $579. What do we use $579 for? Uh, that's so your membership in uh, Maya or MMA, oh. Mass okay. Municipal Association. Okay. And then town administrator, 79740 And I see that's your salary with professional services and a membership for you as well. Um, Finance committee gets a whole $135. The finance committee reserve funds at 29,400 and that's been fairly flat. That's line 20, if anyone's keeping up. Looking at line 29, we have just $52,926 for a town accountant, 24,000 for a town audit. So that's an increase of 2,000. So are we, we're doing annual audits now, which I think is great. But I just so we have a three-year deal that was signed by predecessors. Uh, the second year will be the audit of, of uh, fiscal year ended June 2020. And then the third year of the deal is the year ended uh, June 2021. Okay. So then line 44, Board of Assessors, $52,865. So I see assessors tech support. So I assume that's some sort of software that they use, Peter. So they, yeah, they have to pay for uh, software, you know, license e annually, as mm -hmm. well as uh, uh, access to um, uh, VADAR. Okay. And then other financial services, 41,700. Yeah, that's the outsourcing of uh, Dave and his firm. Okay. Um, the next big bucket is line 59, treasurer collector. That's 100,716. So we have a salary, an admin, a salary for the treasurer, an admin salary for the treasurer, a stipend. So the treasurer collector gets a stipend on top of the salary? For certification, that's been a carryover. Yep. Uh -huh. Um. I don't see anything and the, law, the, the main change in there in the budget, um, which was a supplement at the October meeting, mm -hmm. is adding in 10000 for treasurer tax title. So that's where you're paying legal fees and all of that, chasing down properties under tax title. She'll be talking about that tomorrow evening okay. a bit further. But it was an item that slipped through the uh, budgeting in prior years and uh, had to be picked up and... Uh, end of year transfers and that sort of thing. So if this puts it into the budget. It's it's an ongoing cost. Okay. Um, Forty thousand for legal fees, which seems fairly consistent. Right. Um, technology twenty five thousand. So I assume that's like email and all those other things that we use. That's right, and the tech support service that's ongoing. And a couple of folks had to take advantage of that a little bit today just to get their 
email set up and it, it worked. <laughs> okay. That's when that's when it's good to have. Yes. I remember when I set my set my email. Okay, it's about fifty two thousand eight hundred and seventy one for the town clerk. So I see the six thousand for an assistant, thirty thousand five hundred roughly for a salary. Let's see anything else here. The clerk police detail, I assume that's for to have someone at the town meeting. And the voting, actually for voting. So the elections, like you saw police presence if you voted, uh, there was somebody doing a detail. Okay. So Can once, I, yes, oh, sorry, no, I'm just going to say once I'm comfortable with the line item, I'm going to move on. But if someone else <laughs> is not comfortable, then speak up. No, I'm not. It's. I just have a question because it looks like the clerk part-time seasonal temp wages went down. Yeah, so that's the assistant. They put the assistance cost in 2021 in, in that budget line when that person was added, if you remember at the yep, meeting. I do. And so that's broken separately now as uh, administrative salary. So that's where the assistant is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because overall it's a decrease. So right. I was just wondering. Yep. Thanks. And just keep in mind all of the payrolls for all of the regular peeps, non union and whatnot are two percent increases okay uh line 99 891 whole dollars for the conservation commission i have no question for that um, the planning board zoning is twenty seven thousand four fifty four. yeah so the point there is an increase in the ask and i uh, strongly urge support of that for uh, the town planning services, as you recall, an IMA, an intermunicipal agreement was signed by the board with uh, um, Menden mm -hmm. and Uxbridge, and they broke out a uh, portion of hours for the town of Millville. Uh, this will help bolster uh, a little bit more hours because I think they need it, particularly where their, um, their board uh, is going to have a vacancy. Okay, great. So we're going to move on to the next big bucket, which is Town Hall Old New Building, 155408 So that's Most all, you know, all the admin salaries uh, for the folks that work at Town Hall. And it's a catch-all for all sorts of, uh, you know, utilities and maintenance, uh, grass cutting and that sort of thing, uh, phones and whatnot, postage and mailing. Um, you know, there is some argument for splitting some of these up by departments. There are some departments who have some line items, but quite often the stuff is just charged to these accounts. Um, and to the extent we don't spend it in the other departments, it's uh, a, a turn back. So the Peter, the, the reason it's increasing is because we reduced it in 20 or you reduced it in 21. And then kind of just going back for the, the same ask. But if we look at 2020 actuals, we're at 1600 versus the 12,000. And in 2019, we spent 5,500. So are there maintenance that we've just punted down the road that's going to require like such an increased spend? Or is this a place where we could potentially cut in order to reconcile back to what our revenues are? Because I know we're like over 20,000 right now. Okay, so I'm not sure I followed exactly what you're looking at, but- uh, Line 120, right? If you're looking at line 120, I did add 4,000 because I was trying to negotiate with someone to be sort of the watcher of town, of town building maintenance needs and to the extent there's a, a broken pane fix it to the extent there's a busted gutter downspout replace it you know we cover the materials i'm still working on that conversation so i added for that because i think if you sit in the capital program committee meetings you know the consensus there is that we need to do a better job of keeping up with our maintenance so we're not caught you know flat-footed on something major that uh, we, we deferred too long. So I've added that to the extent we don't use it, obviously uh, it will fall back as a turn back. So uh, it's in there, you, you know, to the extent we get to where we want to reduce some things and not budget for it, obviously that's something we can pare down. Okay, thank you. 
Yep. Is that repairs just to the town hall, Peter? Because we're leasing. No. We wouldn't... Oh, okay. Yeah, no. So, we'll, I mean, mostly town hall. We don't need a lot of repairs. And we're not going to spend a lot. And I try not to, but, you know, quite frankly, you know, we've had, we had, I remember at the last, uh, just before the last public hearing uh, last year, we we're all, before we had shut down, you know, we had a public hearing happening. Um, maybe it was the year before, but in any event, the toilets blocked up, the septic system backed up. It had to get an emergency fix right away, and it was done before that building had 40 people in it that night. So it's those sorts of things we try to okay. cover for. Yeah, that needed to happen. Okay. Yep. Um, annual report for $500. Yeah, that's... Not concerned with that. Um... Police department, 563,110. Yeah, I think tomorrow night the chief will go over this in detail with the finance committee because mm -hmm. he's on. Um, you, the thing to note is, uh, as we, we've talked about, um, you look at the 2020 actual on the line item 134, okay? Police patrol and officer salaries. Uh, it's much lower than the ask uh, the, in the budget and as well as uh, what's asked for this year, but that's because there's a vacant position that uh, is, is needing to be filled. Mm -hmm. um, there may be, uh, the state has put forth, and the chief will talk further about that, but he hasn't put in a formal request yet to change anything. Um, the state, he tells me the state's put forth some requirements for officers to have uh, specific training that will cost, uh, he's estimating a $20,000, $22,000. And part of that training is, you know, driving cars hard and fast and, you know, pushing people off the roads with them and whatever else you do to be a cop in a, in a car that has to respond quickly. So there's some of that that's uh, mandated state training that's not funded by the state that's brand new in the last couple of weeks. So he may, he, he may come forward for that, but that's the point. I don't, I don't want to steal his thunder, nor do I want to speak out of turn. Okay, so we can ask him more questions tomorrow then. Okay. So I'm going to move on from police to fire for 258,423. And I have a feeling that's kind of the same thing. Peter, that we want to hear from the chief tomorrow, unless you know of something that we might want to draw. No, the only thing you can look at, if you looked at the department request, it had originally was 274. I've put in 258, and that's because the two lines above the total is fire, capital, public safety equipment. That They had put in the turnout gear in this as an operating oh. item, and it's a capital item that we have in the capital uh, in the warrant. I, yep. I remove that. that. That's an explanation there. Okay. Um, building and zoning enforcement, 52,471. I can't hear you. I, say I don't see anything there out of the ordinary. Anyone? No, I tweaked that a little bit, just uh, yeah, as you can see on the stipends for gas, plumbing, and electrical inspections. Mm -hmm. And I did the math more correctly on the salary line. Okay. Um, civil defense, eight hundred and fifty dollars. I don't think I have any questions there. Um, animal control, nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So. Peter, it's interesting. There's a stipend here. So I was on a board of health call. I was just listening. And the, I believe the animal control officer said he doesn't get a stipend. He does. Okay. It's paid to him directly by the town uh, twice a year. I might have misheard, to be fair, yeah. like, but I seem to remember that. I could be wrong, but okay. So I'm glad to see that there because certainly we want to pay our employees. That's so, right. okay. Um, great work. A uh, tree warden, 13,500. I have no concerns there. Um, public safety communications, 
72,556. Yeah, so that'll be part of the chief's talk and public safety mm -hmm. tomorrow night, but you'll see there's a big increase of 10,000 for communications professional services. So the chief will talk about um, what the what he what he's needing the money for there, which is some required radio and equipment um, mm -hmm. repairs and the related service to that. Okay. Peter, for awesome. anything that's required, like or mandated, it would be helpful to have that documentation for a review. Do you have that or is that something that I don't, you don't no, know? Okay. Yep. okay. Um, MES ground maintenance. See, I lost my place. There we go. Six sixty-seven thousand six hundred fifty. That's line two fifty-four. Can I just step back on communications though? Oh, of course. Just, just to point out, you'll see on line two fifty. Yes. Um, we we are in the meta comet deal. We are newly into the meta comet uh, dispatch deal, right? It's a new intermunicipal agreement we entered into where previously we were with Menden. It was just Menden and Millville and the we were paying as you see over the prior years, there was a five thousand dollar budget, then it went up to ten thousand. I think it was going to be another ten thousand with Menden. Well, today the equipment the whole meta comment deal isn't operating yet. It's they're still trying to get in fiber optic cables and connections and equipment and software and I don't know what else that they're doing that will then they'll be able to provide the actual dispatch services to Millville. But in the meantime, we're getting dispatch still back under the old situation with Menden. So I'm not sure if he's got the right cost there. He seems to think he does. Um, so it, re it'll, it remains a little bit to be seen. That's all I'm just saying. Okay. Now in the MES water operations, you can see an increase there to try to reflect the actual levels of testing, although this past year we're going to be over that budget, of, we're going to be over the budget amount for 21 and maybe even exceed the budget for 22 because the state had done a survey and order of conditions for equipment and evaluations and testing and all sorts of crazy stuff for water that nobody drinks. So um, we're still beholden to mass DEP on that. And uh, I, I don't have a good hand. No, you know, we just don't have a great handle on what's what's to come there. But that's the best guesses of what we know today. Okay. So Peter, and I keep trying to push it back to ME to BMR, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't because the because if the regional agreement, if you read the regional agreement, and if you read the lease agreement we have with BMR for MES. And given that the new regional agreement is going to have, we're going to have kids from the other town. Uh, the agreements certainly stipulate that it's not, it's an operating cost and the operating costs are the burden of BMR. That's not been past practice. That's not been what people think is the right thing. So I'm not the one to fight that battle, but uh, I just still point that out to you. Okay. Um, Peter, the we had that gentleman though come and speak about the water at the elementary school. Right. I know we're in COVID times right now, so mm -hmm. bubblers and things like that are all wrapped up. These seem to indicate that the water was perfectly fine for consumption. Yeah, he does, and it has been. And we've had an outside expert, one of the world's renowned experts, do it, thanks to uh, Congressman McGovern. He hooked us up with a guy. Uh, who did it for free and we have that report and you know i can reshare that if folks want to see it uh, who also validated that we're doing the right level of test you know we're doing the right level of treatment not necessarily the right level of testing we're being overly tested for good quality water that nobody's drinking and it's not due to covid that the bubblers are wrapped they've been wrapped for right. i know they're wrapped before more. Yes. Right, but now because of COVID, there they would be they would they would, have been they would be wrapped. We wouldn't right. be. Using them. That's correct. Yeah, so I guess that's my point. That right now, yeah. even regardless, the bubblers wouldn't be used or water fountains. Right. Um, but but the testing continues, the monitoring conti continues, okay. and the treatment continues. Okay. 
and my daughter's at that school. I don't mind her. Like when we get past this COVID deal, I don't mind her drinking the water. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. Blackstone Valley, line 258, 352,036. I assume this um, relates to the number of children that we are sending to BBT, so not really negotiable. Correct. 174,224 Norfolk Agricultural Technical, same. Same deal. Same deal. 65,896 for Tri County 264. Same deal. Now, those those headcounts that are used there are what they've provided us based on what they know today, both the Norfolk Aggie and Tri County. Um, they are subject to change if the, you know, if somebody else uh, applies and is admitted. But right now, based on what they know, those are the right numbers. Okay. Is it based, Peter, on final headcount as of like September 1st or October 31st or something like that? Is so it's it's their headcount that they uh, currently have lined up and accepted for next mm -hmm. fiscal year, next school year. And then we end up paying whatever the actual is for that. That's right. And we so then they've already specified the tuition rate. Uh, the the maybe squishy number is the transportation. And certainly we'll see some benefit this year of not having to pay as much on the transportation because kids have not been going to school as frequently. Okay. Um, 3,239,741 for BMR right. School District. Um, <clears throat> I know in conversations I've had with Aubrey, she's been very pleased with the school working with us and the 1.35% increase. So. I have no qualms with that number. No, no they did a great job. Yeah. It's fantastic to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, highway department, I do have a question here. So the total is 166,676. Peter, line 275. Like Speak that again. Line 26275. Two, two, two yeah. Yeah, the name of it. We just did, it's the wrong name. You, you okay. Know. Yeah. Like that's a lot of stamps. It's it's highway. I, I don't know. It's outside. It's professional services as well. Okay. I think the line items are uh, switched. That's what it is. Okay. So fifty dollars for mailing. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot more sense. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other thing to note there is two seventy seven, right? He asked for a hundred grand. I asked for details of the hundred grand. Uh, I don't have that. Uh, I don't think this is a year to put a hundred grand in there. I, I can live with 50. So that's what I put down there. Yeah. Last year's budget was 41.5, which was about a 10 grand increase from the year before. Yeah. In reality, I think the ARPA funds that are, that we still don't have guidance on, nor do we have official notice of the amount that the town's going to get. I don't know if any of those are going to be used for highway, but certainly what the, you know, the current uh, president, is pushing to sign mm -hmm. for the infrastructure, you're, you're going to see a lot of money one way or another that's going to probably free up for some of the stuff Brian's hoping to do with his 100 grand. Great. That would be amazing. Um, okay. And I also agree that, you know, if there was, hey, for, for 100,000, here are these specific projects, I would be more amenable right. rather than a blanket. Okay. Um, so nice. We've had that 80,000 forever. Yep. And I know my other half feels strongly that that should be 80,000. To keep it? <laughs> to keep it at 80, yes. Yeah. I mean, you could, <laughs> you could put it up to a hundred, you, you know, you it, the challenge is if you increase it and then you realize you don't need it so high, yep. bringing it back down becomes a bit of a challenge and your better half, your other half, not your better half, your other half is so pretty excellent. better half, let's be clear. Yeah. I, I'm not getting into that, but <laughs> wise man. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, Townwide fuel twenty four thousand. That seems in line with past expenses. Yep. Three sweeper. We had an extensive conversation at the capital planning committee, and so the twenty one thousand is is what it is. I don't know if anyone has questions on that, but basically we have to do it twice a year, and that's what what it costs. Um, stormwater management, 35,500, line 293. I don't see any issues there. 
Um, and I'm excited to see the street lights bumped up to 20,000. So we'll have street lights in Millville once again. It's very exciting. So you, so I, you know, the board can decide to do that. Except you may want to wait for it to be voted in on the budget. But you know, I could flip the switch with National Grid, and they can start changing those out. You know, they can turn turning them on and changing them out at the same time. Yep. But I'll wait until, you know, that's up to you all to make that decision and when. Okay, and you may want to wait till it's approved at the budget cycle. So, and sorry, I mean, I know that you guys had a lengthy um, discussion with National Grid. I watched the meeting. Um, what is the 20000 based off of? Or do we need to go back and look at that presentation, Peter? Because I know he had, like, different scenarios on using different LED lights that might have a better projection in certain intersections. And there were some lights that Brian was saying that we could probably just take down altogether. Um, so the 20,000, and that includes whatever credits for the first year. Is that right. Okay. Yeah. So it's conversion to, you know, LEDs, low watt LEDs for most of the lights, particularly the ones that are turned off. There are some intersection ones that they included in their estimate, the sort of the recommended LED wattage. So it's a higher level, higher cost LED. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, Brian may have a handful that he might want to switch out, but he, you know, he would have to identify those specifically if and when uh, the this the switch is turned on to go do this. And, and it wouldn't save much money. And this does. So there's a little bit of a uh you know may there might be some cushion in there but not much okay and then the other question so did they say there was a three to six month lead time on swapping out the leds mm -hmm. or okay yeah great thank you yep okay um oh andrew are you gonna say something no nope. okay sorry on my screen you're you get the yellow box around you like you were gonna talk uh -huh. um so i guess I think we should wait for the time meeting and make sure everyone is in favor of it. Um, based on what I can't, you know, people emailing me and, and reaching out and things like that. I think people want the street lights, but I do want to just make sure it was to get that affirmation that yes, it was approved. So and, and one of the key points that really drove me forward to push for this as well was I learned that all of the ones you have turned off, you're still paying for half of the cost of them. Because you're paying for the equipment costs, it's a, you know, it's roughly 120 bucks a year to have a street light on. You're paying 59 dollars and 37 cents or whatever it is for all the ones you have shut off because you're still paying for the equipment charge. So for another 60 bucks, you get them turned on, and and even less so because you're going to switch to LED. So. Yeah, I mean, I think to Jen's point, the cost increase versus what the citizens have been asking for for so long is like peanuts, considering right. all of the other asks that there are from citizens. So I think this right. is a good one. Yep. Okay. So I'm at line 310, Board of Health, 29,500. Nothing's jumping out to me as crazy. I tweaked the Board of Health stipends. There was no justification for that. Okay. Um, okay. So moving on to Council on Aging, 43,674. So as you may recall, the noteworthy thing there are the first two lines, the salaries of the uh, you know senior director as well as the van driver. Mm -hmm. um, historically, if you look at the actuals, they've applied a, an annual grant they get of about six grand. They've they paid payroll from that grant. Mm -hmm. This budget reflects their plan not to be using that grant for paying payroll, but actually charging the uh, up the real cost of the payroll to the budget and using that grant for programs, which is generally what that grant's designed to be used for anyway so okay so i supported that and recommend that you you know consider supporting that approach but oh. okay. that's what you're looking at is there an opportunity to ease into that a bit peter and what i mean by that is if the grant is six thousand it should be used for programs 
could we maybe slowly start to shift? So this year we do 4,500 and 4,500 to the van drive 1500 programs or something like three and three something like that so we can you know, kind of i mean that's that I, I would defer to them and how, what they think okay. but at the end of the day if i looked at if you know I, I did an analysis i think when they were speaking to the finance committee you know their budget as they show it is seven tenths of a percent of the overall town's budget <laughs> and it's 20 percent of the population is their you know their constituents if you will so Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, that's a judgment call for you in terms of what's appropriate. I will say that they are, they are running up against in this current fiscal year because they did budget as if they were using it. However, they haven't used it to pay payroll. And so they're running up against uh, a running out of money in the budget type of thing for the payroll, unless they provide some analysis that they're Time has been wisely spent doing CARES Act related or CARES Act potentially fundable work. Okay. Um, and I also see line 318 skirting. So we approved that through a capital request, $1,000. So I know it's not a whole lot, but knocking well, out that thousand. Yeah, maybe. so they, they had 4,000 in for skirting. So they had a thousand bucks for regular building repairs and maintenance. Their request included was 5,000, which included 4,000 for skirting. I switched that down to 1,000 and they concurred with that. Okay. But so I that 1,000 is for other... It's I'm just sorry. regular maintenance okay. of things, yep. Okay, all right. I'm gonna move on to the library if that... Oh no, sorry, veterans is next on the list. Veteran service, 10,500, line 338. I have no concerns with that number. Yeah, and that cha that can change. I mean, that's a you know we might need nothing, as as often happened, or we might need a lot, and we don't know what it will be. But that's you know maintaining a placeholder in an amount that's been previously budgeted. You know, with a, having a veterans agent, we get seventy five percent reimbursement of whatever the benefits are that are provided. You know, the limited experience I've had with one of my favorite uh, veterans agent that the town has ever had. Um, who's now face we see, um, you know, there were some some challenging personal stories that you have to, you know, that you see are dealt with by this benefit. So um, even if it's used more than budgeted, it's for generally, I would say, uh, needed purposes and uh, good purposes. That's my ex experience so far. Okay. okay. Um, okay, so the library, um, <clears throat> line 357, And You'll see the big change there. They've added in uh, an uh, assistant librarian yep. and some custodial services to their budget. Okay. Um, line 344. The library repairs and maintenance. So we just increased on the capital planning committee the total to thirty thousand dollars for the library. I assume minimally that could be absorbed by that catch-all. Well, that's stuff you haven't anticipated because they had, you know, if you think about the the sort of the blanket repair, the the batching of repairs or bundling of repairs that capital approved and then was changed, recently revised. Mm -hmm. from 16 something to 30,000. Mm -hmm. If you think of the bundling piece, this original 16, 550 or whatever it was, was for specifically identified projects. This is really to cover, you know, if a light needs repair or something, I don't, you know, whatever is unforeseen. Um, but separately, when we get into the warrant, I'll talk about the 30,000. Okay. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question too? This is been for library. Is this nineteen and a half percent of budget? I know it's been a discussion item for a while. Is that seventy five hundred the required amount to invest for um, certification. certification? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So because we had an increase in our budget overall for 2021, the average ends up creating a requirement of 7,500 this year. Well, the 7,500 is based on the overall budget for the that year's budget. Oh, okay. I thought there was something that did like a three-year average. Yeah, I, I, well, I think that's for certification, but somehow they got certified in this past year with the 2021 budget. Okay, I also think they're joining FinCom tomorrow, right? So I can yes. I'll explain it, okay. Yes, and I think a fair question still open is their dues, you know, their Mars membership cost, I, I thought was to be reduced once you're certified. And that's yep. not reflected here. I remember there being a decrease in the overall cost year two as well, Peter, from last yeah. year. Yeah. And then I guess the other question is in terms of how much we need an assistant library and especially given this year, we haven't had it open. I'm hoping it's open more, but um, cause that's pretty much driving the overall increase there. Right. Move into that and like lower that to like 4,500 this year and then make it like ease into it a bit. Um, okay. Recreation, 5,500, line 360. Move on. Memorial Park, line 364, uh, 5,250, 5,250. No concerns there. Historical Commission, $675. Memorial Day celebrations, $500. That's line 369. Um, debt service. So you have three uh, generators of debt service requirement. One is uh, the Title V mm -hmm. debt service, which is the 40,820. And that actually gets paid out of the Title V account. So in the motion that's made at town meeting on the budget, um, it's specifically broken out to be funded, not out of raise and appropriate, but it's uh, paid out of the Title V debt service uh, or Title V account. Um, the other two pieces, one is uh, 128278 which is the BMR debt service, mm -hmm. and 12896 is the BVT debt service. Those are Millville's pieces of the debt service from both uh, school systems. Peter, quick question. Did the, I know the boiler project, has that actually come into the tax assessment yet? No. Okay. Well, that's, so we don't see that in the debt service yet, in effect. Matt Aaronworth was doing his uh, bond, mm -hmm. um, you know, bond materials just recently and, you know, needed some help from the town on that just to get some numbers and so forth. Okay. Um, regional retirement, 215,751, line 378. Yeah, so that's a big number, a big increase. You know, that's nearly 14% increase. Uh, the treasurer is on tomorrow night with FinCom, and hopefully she'll be ready to talk about that. Okay. But it is a number that Worcester County Retirement gives to us. You know, it says pay this bill. Okay. Um, I think at a future selectman's meeting, it would behoove uh, having somebody from Worcester County Retirement just come in and talk about the plan. Okay. and whatever questions you may have you know how they're doing on their investments and funding and all that sort of stuff so we'll see okay peter is that pension are we doing a i know we have a town audit and i apologize if it's already been released and i don't know but um i thought they were doing notes to the financial statements and usually there is some sort of valuation of the pension obligation when i know we did it in 2015 or something yeah so the financials are out there on the website they've been okay. audited certified as of 6 30 19 and you'll okay. also see a footnote in there that uh, I wrote that touches base on BMR's challenges for pension um, and yep. OPEX. Okay. So Thank very you. Very interesting read in those footnotes. <laughs> okay. Um, unemployment insurance is three thousand dollars. Health insurance fringe benefits on behalf of employees is $120,000. Yeah, and you'll see the, the treasurer put in a number. She did a calculation. Uh, I've 
change that to be more correctly done to reflect the, all the pieces that should be there, including having an extra cushion for one uh, additional family plan member, okay. which may not be enough. We get multiple people joining in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the dental insurance plan, line 384, 5,300, 5,310. Um, Medicare fringe benefits on behalf of employees, like 386, 16,265. Then other insurance for 115,000, which brings our grand total to 6,659,255. Which is an increase of 190,000. And less than what was requested by uh, 70,000 ish. Okay. So, Pete, so we end up in a deficit position of 23, $24,000 based right. on our revenue yep. estimates. Yep. And I know there were some issues with free cash at this point. Have they been resolved or can we pretty much expect that there will be no free cash to there transfer? Will be no free cash. Okay. Well, if I know the finance committee, they're going to try to get this down to a net zero <laughs> deficit so we don't have to transfer from general stabilization, but we'll see what, what they come with. So, Peter, do we know why um, we won't have any free cash available? We have a negative free cash number certified by the state. Um, there was a timing on Chapter 90 funds that we did not, uh, we haven't received yet for the Central Street project, which uh, we tried very hard to get factored in, but uh, DLS, state DLS would not do that. Separately, I worked very hard. If you if you wanted to see an email stream to get the state to come around to freeing up some of the excess funds in the Title V account. Mm -hmm. uh, but they just were too spooked to do that. So I actually, uh, when we get to the, uh, war the Warren articles, I might have a placeholder that's not reflected there. I've asked council to look at another way to free up some of that money by just transferring it, seeing if we can transfer it into a stabilization fund. That will set off a, a few bells and whistles at DLS, but you know they don't know enough about it either. I guess the way I describe it. So Peter, in terms of the Title V, I, I think the result of that is that mm -hmm. there was some reconciliation being done on the Title V charges to the operating budget versus it actually coming out of the proceeds from Title V. So you're saying that, is, is it the DLS, well, let me stop. We have cash from that reconciliation. However, it's not part of the free cash certification at this point. So possibly we can use that to just transfer into a stabilization account, or we might have to wait until the fall or something like that to certify that amount of cash. No. So the it, it's we have 718,000 as of June 30th, 2020 in cash in the Title V account, which is not part of the general fund cash, which is used to help derive um, free cash, okay, at a point in time. Separately, we have notes receivable, if you will, from people who borrowed money from the town on their septic betterment loans uh, against whose properties there are liens in the favor of the town. So it's, it's, it's good money one of the receivables and separately we have payables to the mass clean water trust uh, for the notes we borrowed at zero interest basically uh, or two percent interest depending on the particular notes and it's an it's seven or six or seven notes outstanding starting in 2004 so uh, basically um, the premise that i've made and nobody's proven me wrong but they can't prove me they can't prove me wrong, but they can't get over that I'm right, I guess. Okay. They won't accept that I'm right. The premise is that um, we talked earlier on the debt service for the Title V account coming out of the Title V account. In, in many years since 2002, 2004, when we first got into this Title V thing, it appears that 
the the operating budget and the operating fund funded that debt service when it should have come out of the, the Title V account. Hence, we've accumulated bags of cash. Okay, so that's what I've been trying to free up. And DLS, you know, worked very hard with and closely with us, but they just couldn't get there. So their final, you know, determination was no, we're not going to let you free up any of that into free cash. Sorry. So I, I tried to get out of the negative free cash in two, two manners. One, having them count the uh, receivable on the Chapter 90 funds as well as count some portion of the Title V, and they couldn't. So we're in negative free cash, which means to the extent we have a deficit or to the extent we have to pay for snow and ice, which we do, it's going to have to come out of uh, a stabilization fund. Um, when will the title, I'm sorry, the chapter 90 negative free cash issue be resolved? Will it be by the town meeting in the fall, the special town meeting? Yeah, I think so. If we've got certified free cash, it will be reflected in the 63021 free cash determination. Okay. Okay. And then so for we'll the wind up with a big free cash number. <laughs> And for the meeting tomorrow night, I assume that the town accountant will be there as well to answer questions as the treasurer will be there. Say that again. Sorry. Tomorrow night at the meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. I don't think so. Why not? Uh, he does not want to, number one. Number two, he's in his last, well, so I'll jump to the 48 hour. I'll bundle in the 48 hour thing. Okay. He's turned in his notice on Friday. That's fine, okay. but that doesn't release him from any obligations he has. Yeah, I'm not going to get him there. He's not going to go there. He refuses, okay? And that gets into discussion of even though he's an outside vendor, he's just not going to do it. Okay. So it sounds like it's yeah. – so I would I'm rather have a different town accountant. Than so we'll have a different town accountant. It will either be another outside service provider. I have a discussion ongoing with one of those. Or it will be a, a hire, and I have a, an in-person interview, having already had an interview by phone of a candidate that, you know. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm hoping you'll you'll be the ultimate appointing authority, but I might make a deal, you know, and I hope you'll trust me on that deal that I might make, which will fall within budgets and guidelines. It might require some geography here to move things around a little not to so anyway we'll we'll see i don't want to go too far on that no no, no that's okay um well i guess so as you're speaking to this new person i mean we need to have this person at meetings mm -hmm. that's totally understood we yeah. that yes and we've already discussed that and great so i'll be and, and part of the job description and job requirements for the new person yeah. oh yeah great exactly what i wanted to hear <laughs> okay and so, I'm sorry, Peter, did you say he gave his notice and Friday is his last day? Or? Uh, so the 14th or 15th is his last day. Okay. 15th. So I'll see him tomorrow. Anything else on the preliminary budget? So again, just in terms of the derivation of the deficit is the revenue assumptions, right? And so in the revenue assumptions currently is uh, 30,000 in uh, marijuana impact fees. We get 3% of revenues. And separately, we get 3% of basically ta sales tax uh, as well. So there's 60,000 bucks related to marijuana revenues, which assumes basically a $1 million level of revenue by the currently opened marijuana retailer in town. Okay. And I think that's conservative. I know their break-even number is a, a multiple of that. Um, and uh, so we'll see. And we'll also have, by the time town meeting comes around, we hopefully will have a better sense of what their activity is. Okay. So that, here, just to clarify, so that 30000 in the rev, uh, impact fees and then the revenues, we, you're expect, we're expecting to start seeing them by the town meeting, so we'll be able to increase Funds, I guess that's correct. We'll see some. Yeah, we'll we'll have a better sense of what their activity has been for two or three months that they've been open. And okay. so it's 
60,000 total related to um, marijuana operations, impact fees and additional sales tax. Okay. And keep we, in mind that that vendor has paid us, prepaid us 60,000 already. Okay. Is that prepaid 60,000 available for us? Available well, to us? The bank, but it's currently, a, a, you know, a deposit It's treated as a deposit. It's not okay. a free cash item. It's not available for operating funds. Okay. Um, but that, so it, it will be that we will convert some portion of that and say less next year, 30,000 of that from deposit to impact fees. Okay. So I guess just to kind of get to the root of my question. So none of these revenues will be available to us in this FY22 budget. Yet. No, they will. We will have revenues available also in this FY21. We'll have revenues both this current fiscal year mm -hmm. and next fiscal year, this budget that we're looking at mm -hmm. has 30,000 of those impact fees reflected as revenue, okay. which I think is very conservative. Okay. And Peter, where does that come in on the recap, but the recap of the budget? Oh, is that in, in other uh, funds? The 30,000 is in the um, local, re local receipts. There's 632,000. Yep. Okay. Have, and... So we have motor vehicle excises in there. We have cannabis excise. Hmm. We have cannabis impact fees. Okay. Okay. So it's all in there. Okay. And interest, you know, we got 50% of the ambulance fees projected, that sort of thing. So there's a page there of those items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I apologize if I'm not getting this, but I just want to make sure I do. So if we're going to have this money available to us this year to spend, are we able to appropriate it at the annual town meeting or do we have to wait to the special town meeting? I just want to make sure it's available. How do we make it available for use? So it's really just going to convert cash money in the bank from a deposit into revenue, general revenue. So it's not like you can use it, you know, or identify it or any of that sort of thing. It would be into the free cash determination. What amount we, you know, I, I don't, I don't okay. know yet. What, no, no, know. no, that now it's clear. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So any other questions on the budget or are we okay to move on? Okay. I'm done. Yay. Okay. You can ask more questions. I have nowhere else to be all night, but he, right here. Um, I know Mrs. Gill thinks I talk too much, so I'll try to keep it quiet but <laughs> that's only a capital questions. Yeah. that's only no peter i appreciate your answers and it's when in the capital planning meeting when you and jerry get going it's like when he gets going not me come on now. <laughs> so moving on to the warrants <laughs> so um we can do the same thing. I can go through the warrant. So article one is monetary increases. This was submitted by the finance committee. Just on the cover page, I'm going to change the date and time, of course. Yep. Oh, yes. Okay. In a rain date. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, good. So article one is on monetary increases. So this was submitted by the finance committee to see if the town vote to authorize any motion to increase any monetary articles and line items as recommended by the finance committee. Um, okay, so I'll be out of order unless such motion or amendment states the source of the funding from available free cash, line item, article, or other funding source. Mm -hmm. so I like this motion. <laughs> I like this article rather, because I like that it's, you have to say where the money's coming from. You can't just go. And really, really. Um, article two, bills of prior fiscal year to see if the town vote pursuant to Mass General Law uh, C44, 64 to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds such as sums of money necessary for the purpose of paying outstanding bills. Did you say we don't have any outstanding bills? Yes, I'm not aware of any. To the extent okay. there are any, that would be part of the motion. We'd identify the specific item payee that in amount. Okay. Peter, given that we have a resignation from our town accountant, would this have to be submitted by updated to be somebody that's actively working for the town as of the uh, as of the meeting date? 
I don't know. I'll ask the lawyer. You know, I think it also had in there in town administrator. I pulled that out and what you see, but yeah, I, it I, might go I, opposite. I'm trying to push it on, and I'm actually kind of hopeful I'll have somebody hired by then. Perfect. That would be amazing. Yes. Okay. Um, Article three is regarding snow and ice. So, Peter, do we have a deficit? Yes, it's probably bordering on uh, you know thirty eight thousand dollars. Okay. Um, Article four is regarding chapter 90. Yep. Okay. So that's a boilerplate type of thing. Yeah. Right? Okay. Just like the next one. Yep. <laughs> next one's cable license fees. So 7,500. Oh, this is for BMR, so they can televise. Yep. Okay. Article six was the budget that we just went over. Yep, and the key will be in the motion, we'll specify the source of funds to cover any deficit, as well as the Title V um, debt service. Okay. Okay. Um, Article seven is regarding the union contract ratification. To the extent that's finalized by town meeting, right? So it might, I'm, I think it needs to stay as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be taught, we have executive session later. Okay. But, yeah. you know, it might be withdrawn if the deal isn't done. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Article 8 is the fire department turnout gear. So that was for $16,000. This is something that we need to replace in a timely manner. People need to that gear. Um, Article nine, so just to let everyone know, the Capital Planning Committee split on the cruiser. It was a 3-3 vote um, because the plan that we put forth was a new police cruiser every other year. So we bought one last year and we were trying to be mindful of the plan. So the people, so I voted no to stick with the plan. I um, voted yes, and I'm a voting member of that committee. Yes, and I was just- and we still speak to Peter each other. Voted, yes. <laughs> Peter voted yes. Um, so I guess it would be up to this board if we want to put it, keep it there or not. That's correct. And okay. just as a point of uh, update, and I think the chief hopefully will talk more specifically about it, and it will segue into uh, Article 11 as well. Um, in the green community grant application process, and the grant's going in, I think, tomorrow, I got to sign some stuff on it. Um, <clears throat> we've included a request for $5,000 to partially fund the cost of a police cruiser, um, uh, a hybrid Ford Interceptor. So the chief would have the details on what the cost is of that and so forth. It would fall within this 50,000, um, presumably. Um, so th it, that helps the cause of the sort of the analytics that the decision makers of granting green community funds to communities that that helps the cause doesn't mean you have to spend. You're muted. Sorry, I went on mute because I didn't want everyone to hear me cough. <laughs> um, when I talk a lot, my throat starts to get dry and I cough. Um, so Article 10, so this was 17,500 to fund facility improvements. So um, we're trying to be flexible on the Capital Planning Committee. And I think um, I can't remember if Peter made this point or if it was someone else on the um, Capital Planning Committee. But we want to make sure that the build, we have so few services that we offer. We want to make sure that the ones that we have are maintained nicely. So we wanted to kind of allow for bundling and so people could make overall improvements for the senior center. We did the same thing for the library, make sure that the services that we have are offered you know, just nicely. So um, that was the funds for the senior center. And then the same is for the next line item on the library. Just, but just as an update, I wanted to tell you on the library, again, oh. it, it, the capital committee at their last meeting, as you recall, approved ad increasing the amount they originally had in this uh, Warren article by 13,500 bucks roughly um to be a copay if you will on the grant application for furnace re 
placement and uh, relocation in our green community grant application. And it turns out that the powers that be of decision makers at Department of Energy Resources that we deal with and putting this together said, you know what, that thing is not gonna fly. So I'm gonna ask that you change the number back to the original number. It's, we're, we're not including uh, the request for the furnace replacement and uh, relocation because it actually hurts the energy savings numbers significantly. There was, you know, 75 year payback and it just wasn't going to help our cause and might jeopardize our success on the other items in the grant that we've applied for. So uh, we don't need that extra money that we and that came up literally the next day after our <laughs> capital committee. So I'm sorry no to be a yo-yo on this, but I think we're, you know, at least we're getting to the right place. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll put that one back. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then so school committee to stipend. So I remember that there was discussion last year that we didn't have an article to approve those. So I'm glad to see this here. So we're following the rules. Um, so it's just a comment on this because I, you know, I, I had discussed this before. Should we, like, I know when I look at Blackstone's warrant, they actually couple this with the BVT stipend. And I understand the difference now is that we actually break out the BVT stipend as a second line item in the budget. And so if it gets approved through the budget process, the stipend is approved, whereas these stipends are coupled or they're embedded in the school budget, but not broken out separately. So I guess my question to the committee is whether or not we should add the BVT stipend as well. And potentially, I don't know if we need to add it as a new article because this one was submitted by the district by the district and have them have the BOS recommend or submit the stipend approval for the BVT. I just think it would be helpful to be consistent because they're both included in the budget. You know, Jen, can you repeat yourself? You kind of went out a little bit. Sorry, I think we should be consistent. I think we should have a separate article for BVT. That's okay. Fine. How about if I check with council because it's not consistent with in terms of the cost, the way it's done, you know, at BMR, those stipends are part of their budget, which is then split by the allocation or the assessment in the agreements. BVT, the stipends are not included in their budgets, hence the line item that was in and then was out and then recently in and is currently in. Um, but whether it should be or is a good uh, you know, municipal practice to have that sort of thing uh, identified separately, I, I'll ask council. Okay. You can do whatever you want, but I'll ask council and see if we can get sort of the right wording because I don't know that it's necessarily the same wording as what uh, BMR has done. Okay. And, then, and so I think at the end of this discussion, the target should be for your next meeting to you know, two things I hope comes out of this discussion. One, that you set a date to close the warrant and arguably you could close the warrant tonight and then reopen it at your next meeting for any new items like this type of item we just talked about. Or you could keep it open, I would say no longer than say next Monday, quite frankly, okay? And you close the warrant as of five o'clock, uh, April 12th. That, that, so think about that as, you, as we get through the rest of this. And, and then separately at your April 20th meeting is when I hope you basically um, vote on these items and because you're running out of time to, you know, finalize the warrant and then get it posted. Okay. okay. Um, so I'm looking at Article 14, the town bylaws and elections. So we're looking to move the elections, and that's sort of what, what, what's going on now. Like Todd and Adria are coming in, and it's like, damn, budget, you're going to vote on it. So to move things, so. We have the same board do the budget and then at the town meeting and then after that. And so this was done by Diane and myself back in a fall 19 town meeting it was voted down, but it was close. 
and Erica has to put it back in. So I put it under a by board of selectmen. You know, it's uh, the pleasure of this board, what you want to do on that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, you've got half of this board as living proof of the challenge of the timing of these darn elections versus town meetings and so forth. Yeah. Cool. Um, article 16 is cable appropriation. So 25000 to fund... Uh, yeah, basically, this this is one I'm still uh, fleshing out a little bit. The, the, the current town accountant had, uh, how shall I say it in technical terms, his knickers in a twist about uh, the appropriation or lack thereof of monies that is paid out of the cable access funds or cable peg access cable fund for paying Alex, for example, or paying, you know, for equipment and paying such things. So. This was the intent of this is yet subject to uh, council review um, to ensure that the the amounts you know that, that have to be paid for wages and expenses as estimated and so forth are have been appropriated at town meeting. So that's what this article is trying to do. I'm not a hundred percent able to talk about it. And the town accountant didn't want to be the sponsor of it, but I believe the town accountant should be because the town accountant is the one who has the problem. But the town accountant's leaving, so forth. In any event, I'll be checking with council a little bit further, and that's why that's in there. What's not in there, but might be if particularly by the time you set a date to close the warrant, if you choose next Monday, for example, uh, would will be or won't be something related to the title five excess cash transferring to a stabilization fund okay yeah. so that's still to be determined i got the questions out to council i don't have answers so the closed door on monday do we need to meet again on monday or can we vote on yeah. it closing on monday at five right now yeah i think you can just vote on closing it that way nobody else can submit something in, in my sub when I sent out um, Warren article request forms to all department heads and stakeholders, if you will, I had asked for return as a courtesy for the board by actually March 15th. So any date you put on this, I think, is fair game, quite frankly. And you could close it tomorrow. You can close it tonight. But I think because you have a couple of open items, you know, I guess what I'd say, I guess the way I look at it is you have two items that you basically are uh, allowing in but may not get in there. One is the uh, BVT stipend one and one is this uh, Title V uh, potential one. So those are already captured and brought forth to the board. It's just that if somebody else wanted one, for example, uh, Lincoln mentioned he wanted something to do with the earth removal board uh, but he needed to fill out a form and provide explanations and he hasn't done that so he's if you leave it open he has time to do that and okay. then make his case you still decide whether you want to include it or not okay are there any opinions from the members of the board on opening on closing and when so I just want to clarify, if we decide to close it, say tonight or Monday of next week, then any submissions after that date, we would need to vote to open it and at the next meeting, close it, then vote on those warrant articles. But we can reopen it to submit um, potentially the BBT or the Title V septic um, by vote as well. Okay. Well, and yeah. if we op if we close it and then reopen it, then we consider all other submissions after the closing date? Yeah, I think the real risk is to the extent there was a citizen's petition article. That's really the challenge of closing. You know, if, you, if there was something that was going to come and say, we want to eliminate the Board of Selectmen of Millville altogether, right? Maybe that's not one that you want to get into your warrant. And so you wouldn't, you know, if you opened it for an instant, it could slide in there. But I see no other reason to, there's no risk, no harm, no foul. 
Well, I'm open to considering Peter's recommendation to um, to close it on Monday, which would be the 13th. I think it's the 12th. Is it? Oh, today's Tuesday. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I was adding seven days thinking it was a Monday because that's when the board of selectmen generally meets. <laughs> Yeah, so that you would have to take a formal vote to close it as of a particular date. I can make a motion to close it for um, Monday, April 13th. Is there a certain time, Peter, like at 5 p.m.? Or... Yeah, you just pick a time. 5 p.m. is good. Yep. Okay. You mean Monday, April 12th at 5 p.m., right, Adrian? Yes, I do mean the 12th. Thank you. A motion to close the warrant on Monday, April 12th at 5 p.m. I'll second it. Todd, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Everyone has until Monday at five to sneak something in. Um, okay, old business. Nothing that's an all new board. Okay. Um, public forum. Alex, is there anyone who wants to ask a question? So we got quite a few people watching, but no questions. I do have a question though. Um, I messaged um, Tim and I messaged Jesse about the annual town meeting. Yes. Um, I just want to clarify to make sure it was agreed that we do like May 8th as the official. Is it, was that the date? May, May 8th? 8th is tentatively set. Peter needs to confirm with the town clerk and perhaps a few others as well to make sure they're available on that date. Okay. And then the thinking was the rain date would be the following Saturday. Be two the Saturdays 15th. from then because the moderator is not available on the 15th. So it would be May 27th. Okay. Okay. Both at noon. Both at noon. Both both starting at noon, which would mean we'd set up obviously before then. Okay. That's all I need to know. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you, Alex. Well, oh, you're asking a question, Alex. Did anyone else sneak in? Oh, no other questions. No. Nope. Okay. Well, since so many people are watching, I'll just remind everyone that we were more than happy to take questions or discussion. So I just can't stress that enough. That I do want to hear from people as much as possible. Um, select reports. Um, one quick question. Uh, both new members did receive the um, uh, were, were sworn in to office, right? Previous to today's meeting? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yep. That was my only thought that I had at the moment. One thing, um, I don't know that I want to be chair of two committees, well, a board and a committee. So I think at the next capital planning committee, we'll need to consider a reorganization. Okay. Okay. Um, just kind of on that note, Jen, uh, I just, I don't know if this should be going into the items not reasonably anticipated um, or the selectmen's report, but I was asked to serve prior to being voted in as a selectman, um, asked to serve on the BMR Capital Planning Committee, which I am attending an informational session on the 14th of April. Um, in addition, uh, Jeff Pettit, my husband, who serves on the Capital Planning Committee for Millville, was also asked. And um, so I need to figure out if there's any conflict of interest because we both bring very different um, skill sets to the BMR Capital Planning Committee. But I just wanted to make sure I put that out there and I got my um, conflict of interest packet today. So I'll take a look at it. But for now, both Jeff and I will be attending the informational session and then we can decide from there if there's any issues or if one of us is not interested. So I just wanna make sure I'm letting you guys know. And I don't know if they're asking for, um, I mean, I know they're always welcome to have anybody serve on their subcommittees, but I don't know, I know with the regional agreement, they asked for a member of board of selectmen and a member of finance committee to, to be on that subcommittee. So, um, if that's the case, then you know certainly I, I'm willing to do that. 
Thank you for volunteering already on your first day. That's fantastic because we were wondering about someone and uh, having someone on that committee. So great. I don't and I don't think there would be any conflict of interest about having a husband and wife serve together on a committee. And I just say that because Gary and I were on the committee that put forth Peter as a candidate and that was fine. And so, and Paul and Aubrey as well, were on that together. So okay. I don't think it'll be an issue. And can make for more exciting meetings. Um, or okay. conflicts at home. That's the big <laughs> conflict to worry about. Um, okay, so anything else on selection report? All right. Um, I just wanted to jump back in for a second here. Yes, I, I just looked at the calendar and um, there's a possibility that me and Jesse, possibly Tim as well, will be busy on the 22nd on okay. the rain date. So okay. um, we put in a bid for an event at URI, but we're not sure if it's going to go through or not. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure exactly, but it looks like that may be the case. What about the 23rd or is it two days? Is that Monday? That's oh, that's Sunday. Saturday and the 23rd would be a Sunday. I, it's, it looks as though I have the weekend scoped out for this event. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure on the, on that. So I was thinking that too, but I don't know if that would work either. Okay. So we can go back to Jackie and others and figure out the rain date and maybe we um maybe the rain date is the 10th when it should be and we'll mm -hmm. have to do something like that and start it earlier because we need you there we need jackie there i'm worried about sunset and bugs there's a lot of things to manage with the scheduling of this annual town meeting but maybe that i think because i i do I, I like the saturday i think that's a good idea especially when we're all outside um and it'll be warmer um, but at the same time, we can't, I don't want the rain date to be like June 18th. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> so, um, and I, I'll text you after this night and say, you know, maybe the rain date is the 10th. Yeah, and if you did it, the, it, it argue, ideally you could start at six. Yeah. It's a stretch, but if you could start it at six on the rain date, mm -hmm. based on what you've seen for the warrant, you know, and you think of that. Yeah. If we could finish in two hours, that would be before about 15 minutes before sunset. Yeah. 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 I just like I'd like it as the plan B. So and then okay. All right. So maybe yeah. we can do something like that. Okay. So uh, Alex, do you have any idea when you would be able to finalize like you would know finalizing your calendar or um I'd have to ask Jesse about that. I'm not sure. He may even have an answer for me tonight. I'd have to message him and see but maybe probably within the week or so, a couple of weeks, I would assume they would know. So probably by the time we finalize the warrant, it should be. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move on to number 11, town administrator report. And Peter, I want you to talk for as long as you want to. No, I really don't have much. Uh, just a, a heads up to look for an email that will uh, confirm, hopefully, that next Wednesday at 11 a.m., the town will be taking delivery of its new ambulance. And we'll be inviting Senator Fatman's office uh, folks and Soder, and we'll see whether uh, others might be involved. And you all would be invited. Whether you can make it or not, of course, that's, you know, life gets in the way, but um, it would, the, talking to the chief, the plan is that it would arrive exactly at 11 a.m. Uh, in front of the fire station. So okay. that's I an exciting, that exciting thing to look forward to. Yeah, no, it is exciting. I'm actually very proud of the Capital yeah. Planning Committee yeah. working with Senator huge. Batman and Representative Carter. So. Huge. I, I'm going to be there. I can make that happen. That is great. Um, okay, items not anticipated in the last 24 hours. Any other, anything else other than what was already discussed? Nope. Okay. And then the next regular meeting, I believe this is a typo because it That's says right. Tuesday, April 20th. Tuesday, the 20th. Okay. 
And you are also posted for tomorrow night's FinCom meeting yes. if okay. you wish to attend. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so looking for a motion to enter executive session. Only to return to open session to adjourn. Yep. Yes, thank you. I move that the board of oh, sorry. Go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> oh, um, I move that the board of selectmen enter into executive executive session per Mass General Law Section Thirty A, Subsection Twenty One A Three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Teamsters Union Local One Hundred and Seventy, Town of Millville Police Officers. Looking for a second. I'll second. second. Hi, I'm going to put Adrian because Todd did the last second. Okay. Um, and a roll call vote. So Jennifer Gale, aye. Aye. Adrian, Adrian Pettit, aye. Todd Trottier, aye. Did I miss your eye? Yeah. Did you miss? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So Alex, if you could make me the host and close.